With the tumult of new DAX every month, it sometimes feels like audiophiles are being funneled into spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on this gear. We do not often get budget DAX. SMSL wants to change that. Recently, this company released the SU-1, their entry-level standalone DAC. It retails for $80. The folks at Shenzhen Audio sent me the SU-1 to review. As you know, there are only a handful of retailers that specialize in audio gear. Shenzhen Audio is one such provider. There you can find any assortment of goodies for your needs, from cables to DACs to amps to headphones and IEMs. Check them out if you're looking for new toys. Now, let's delve into the SU-1. SMSL says that the SU-1 uses a single AK4493S DAC chipset. This is also found in a few audio interfaces and the recent FIO K7, which implements two of these chips for balanced output. AKM's website says that this DAC chip was created specifically for low power use. The SU-1 caters to every aspect of high resolution audio. This includes every flavor of PCM, including the highest 32-bit options, MQA, and DSD-512. There's no Bluetooth option. However, SMSL saw fit to include MQA CD decoding, you know, for all those dozens of MQA CDs floating around. The SU-1 is tiny, roughly a similar size as the Shit Modi or Monolith Liquid Spark. It is made of aluminum and sits sturdy on the desk. The front panel has a power button and four LEDs which indicate source. The back panel has RCA out and coaxial, optical, and USB inputs. SMSL says that NQA can be rendered from all these inputs. The SU-1 is powered by a single USB-C cable which doubles as the computer connection. Overall, the SU-1 is a very basic looking DAC that supports everything except Bluetooth. While some might prefer balanced connection, this DAC provides plenty for anyone who is not interested in balanced end-to-end. -end. I have a consistent method of testing and comparing DACs. Rather than waxing poetic about how amazing the newest toy makes someone feel, I'd rather delve into real-world true A-B comparisons, the type which you can replicate yourself at home. I broke the testing into several phases. In phase 1, I used the SU-1 as my primary source and connected to my Gustard H16. I plugged the DAC into both my PC and Mac desktops. I listened to music and watched videos on YouTube and other streaming services. In phase 2, I compared the SU-1 against competitors. This includes the SMSL Sanskrit, Songcause LAQXD1, and the SU-9N. I plugged the DAX into a passive AB switch, then connected that to my Gustard H16. I volume mashed using software on my computer and hardware on the DAX when available. I listened to high resolution lossless audio from Amazon Music HD. In phase 3, I wanted to know if any amplifiers demonstrated a noticeable difference when plugged into the SU-1. To that end, I connected the SU-1 to my PC, then to a passive AB switch that sent signal to various amplifiers. I used a passive headphone switch box to monitor the output. The comparative amps I used here were the Rupert Neve headphone amplifier, the Shit Heresy, and the Gustard 816. Throughout these tests, I used several headphones to get a varied perspective. This list includes the HD6XX, Austrian Audio Hi X55, Odyssey LCD2 Closed, Hi-Fi Man Sundara, and the Sennheiser HD800S. I strongly encourage people to conduct these types of true volume mashed AB tests at home. For about $25, you can find the necessary off-the-shelf components to create your own test bench. If you want less reviewer and fanboy BS, I think you need to establish a reliable, repeatable testing method that mitigates against audiophile nonsense. Now that we've talked about the testing parameters, let's just get to the results. In phase one, I plugged the SU-1 into my computers and used it as a standalone DAC paired to my H16. I was looking for any usability issues, whether the SU-1 disconnected randomly, the driver crashed, or there was any audible distortion in the signal. The short answer is no. The SU-1 performed perfectly well. My Mac and PC immediately recognized this DAC. All my software connected with the SU-1. 
I never experienced random disconnect or driver crashes or any other oddities. In phase two, I compared the SU-1 against several alternatives. The idea was to determine if there would be any audible differences among DACs. I have already tested and compared these competitors and they all have transparent, flat signatures. This is supported by their respective measurements as well. Here, with the SU-1, the result was exactly the same. This DAC has no audible difference whatsoever compared to any other DAC. When volume matched and using A-B switches where music is continuous, the DACs sound exactly the same. I want to emphasize a few things as lots of audiophiles believe that DACs all have different sound signatures, and their discussions can devolve into hypothetical defenses that lack support. First, some people claim that every DAC chip has a different sound, or more precisely, that a new chip will somehow convert digital to analog differently from another older DAC. This does not make any sense, given the DAC chipset manufacturers do not make such claims. The DAC box manufacturers also do not make these claims. FIO, SMSL, Topping, SHIT, Matrix Audio, and many others rarely claim that their DAC products have any sound signature, and instead, the information from these companies leads to an opposite conclusion, that these DACs are transparent. Second, some people claim that the analog section somehow alters the sound. This is a throwaway argument and typically does not even intend to explain how this is possible. I suppose one could argue that the analog section may be imperfect in some way, adding distortion, which might give the impression of altered sound or less clarity compared to another product that has better implementation. That might be a viable position to take, but then if that is the case, then the imperfect analog section is just that, imperfect or faulty. Third, I think a lot of misunderstandings arise from volume mismatching. It is a scientific fact that humans prefer louder sounds. Failing to volume match will lead to false impressions of altered sound signatures. If one DAC is outputting higher voltage, leading to slightly higher volume from the amp to the headphones or speakers, then sure, you will hear something different. Maybe in this instance, you could claim that the louder DAC sounds cleaner or clearer or more detailed or more engaging. But if you monitor the volume and level the playing field, those perceptions melt away. Finally, the last ditch effort by DAC fans is for them to adamantly claim that if you do not hear a difference, then either you are deaf or your equipment is not good enough. I think medical professionals should make determinations of physical health, not random internet keyboard warriors. And it always amuses me when people say that the headphones or IEMs or amps are not good enough to hear the supposed differences among DACs. Apparently, these DACs are really picky and you have to have just the right equipment. If that's true, then don't worry about it. Why fuss with gear that requires you to spend more and more and more money, always changing the playing field whenever a different DAC fan says so. I say all of these things so that people think about alternative explanations before jumping to the conclusion that something is better because it's newer or because it's expensive or because reviewers or fans say it is the best. All right, moving on. Finally, in phase three, I plugged the SU-1 into several amps to determine if it provided an altered sound. Just as with the DAC comparison, the answer here is no. Volume mash with continuous music, there's no difference at all. Of course, you can look at SMSL's provided measurements. They show a flat frequency response. They show a dynamic range of about 121 decibels, which is far outside the recorded dynamic range of any track. Ultimately, I say that the SU-1 is a perfectly good product. It is sturdy, hassle-free, and provides an abundance of resolution support. Maybe Bluetooth would have been nice, but at this price point, perhaps that is a bit too much to ask for. DAC and AMP discussions remind me of camera megapixel arguments. The more megapixels in your camera, the better the photos will look, or so the argument goes. It's a fallacy that is regularly debunked, but the claim persists. Similarly, people say that the higher the dynamic range, the better the DAC will sound. The problem is that music has pre-recorded dynamic range, which falls far, far short of anything modern DACs support. 
Just because you buy a DAC with 140 decibels of dynamic range does not mean that your track with 11 decibels of recorded dynamic range is now suddenly upscaled to 140 decibels. You cannot alter the recording. Nor do I think that buying expensive DACs makes any sense. They have terrible resale value. With new DACs released every few months, it's no wonder these things are sold at significantly depreciated prices on the used market. So, my suggestion is that you buy a DAC that fits your needs. If you don't care about balanced output, then don't look at a DAC with balanced connections or multi-DAC chipsets. If you want Bluetooth or MQA or a tube stage, then look for those specific requirements given a specific budget. Here, the SU-1 shows that it can perform just as well in real-life, real-world use when compared to more costly alternatives. While it doesn't look great, it does support all except Bluetooth. For $80, you get to experiment with any form of PCM, DSD, or even MQA. Add an amp of your choice and you've got yourself a good system that can last you a long time. In my book, the SMSL SU-1 does everything right. It's affordable, sturdy, seems reliable, and supports all the audio codecs I would ever use. If you're in the market for a budget DAC with features offered in much more costly alternatives, then I think the SU-1 is a great bargain.